that has been shared this morning, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit's presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for drawing us to place of prayer and faith in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that you know the end from the beginning, and it is a good ending. Hallelujah. Father, help us to be strong and to stand, amen, on your word, and to love as you have loved us. Let the Holy Spirit shed the love of God abroad in our hearts. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And through that love, a sense of security, safety, and comfort in the Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you for it, Lord. And we declare peace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Peace that passes understanding, Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you this morning in Jesus' name. And everybody say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Tim. Great job, as always. Appreciate your insights and sharing the Word of God. <clears throat> we appreciate it so much. Thanks again to Mike and Suzanne for all that they're doing. Praise God. And so much that uh, y'all don't see that I'm seeing every day, and I, I'm so grateful for that. Yes. And I'm grateful to see... Living human beings here today, praise the Lord. It's a great thing. Although Peter says we're not really human. Not we're new creatures, praise the Lord. That's right. He told me I was his favorite veteran, or one of his favorite veterans. And so I texted him back and told him he was one of my favorite human beings. And he corrected me and said, well, I'm not completely. I'm not completely. Because I'm a new creature, praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Appreciate you being with us. Everybody on Facebook. Uh, we love you, and are so glad that you're participating in the service with us. Amen. And I uh, hope that the Lord is blessing you where you're at. Amen. We're all together in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And uh, again, we, we look forward to seeing you all back here at, one, at some point. Uh, those of you that are uh, outside of the geographic location and, and wouldn't be here otherwise, we love you too, and you're still a part of the, uh, the body and, and what God is trying to do through all of us. And we, we love you and are grateful to have you. Amen, as a part of this church, praise God. And by the way, speaking of that, uh, I got an email from uh, Darlene and Don, and they're going to be coming back uh, the first part of July for a month. So they'll be able to be with us for a little while as well, and that'll be nice, and it'll be great to see them again as well as all of the others, amen, that are a part of the church. And, and we understand the uh, concerns that people have, and maybe if they have pre-existing conditions and so on and so forth, uh, we just trust the Holy Spirit to lead you and, and to guide you. And uh, when, when that time comes, we'll be grateful to have you with us. In the meantime, amen, just trust God wherever you're at and whatever your situation might be. Amen. Praise the Lord. So thank God for all of you and uh, looking forward to what God's going to be doing in the near future here. Amen. I know one thing, it's going to be really hot this week. That'll kill a bunch of germs on you. <laughs> amen. I do have a mask. In fact, it's hanging from my... Uh, rear view uh, mirror and that's because uh, I can't get into Menards to buy bird seed without a mask so there you go praise the Lord and uh, <clears throat> I got to feed the birds because they don't know anything about this pandemic they're just they're expecting me to be out there and feed them and if they don't they crap all over my truck so it's a protest it is and rightfully so amen speaking of flying what, what do you call a fly without wings a walk. Well, since we're on that subject, of what are you? Uh, what do you call a belt made of watches? A waste of time. They're not. Getting, they're not going to get any better. Praise the Lord. So, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. Would <laughs> you remember when you were a kid? You know, throwing them, mine doesn't ever come back, praise the Lord. Okay, what do you call a Kleenex? Uh, or, uh, let me put it this way. How do you make a Kleenex dance? We've got them all over here. So Think about it. Go ahead. Put a little boogie. That's it. That's it. I'm really used to that one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Hey, well, somebody's on the same page here this morning, thank the Lord, but it's a little frightening and uncomfortable that it's Peter, so hallelujah. <laughs> My therapist always 
says I'm doing a lot better. I think you're right. <laughs> what should a sick bird do? Get treatment. <laughs> <laughs> treatment. Praise the Lord. Okay, so enough of that. Praise God. Again, we appreciate everybody being here. Let's go to the Word of God this morning. I'm so grateful to all of the testimonies and, and uh, sharing of uh, thoughts and feelings. Amen. And, and it so connects with what the Lord has put on my heart this morning to share. And that is always encouraging to me. And uh, Tim has a way of setting this up. I mean, I know it's the Holy Spirit, but I'm grateful that he's uh, yielded to the Holy Spirit so God can speak uh, through him as well as y'all the way you shared this morning. I mean, that's what's so uh, significant about us being able to come together, I think, is the, the fact that I miss that Holy Spirit witness from different people and how God uses all of us to bring together uh, what his thoughts and intents are for each and every one of us. So it's, it's exciting. Praise the Lord. With that in mind, Peter, well, let's go to 1 Peter 1, verses 18 through 25. 1 Peter Chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And I, I shouldn't probably do this because then I, I'll leave other people out. But I want to say hi to, uh, <coughs> to Roy and Karen. They had been on Facebook and asked some different things about getting back to church and so forth. And I want them to know we're thinking of them. We love them. Understand situations are difficult, especially with family and all that they're dealing with as well. But uh, we love you and miss you, Roy and Karen. And uh, look forward to seeing you back here soon. And that goes for all of you. But... Uh, Amen. I just uh, had them on my heart because uh, of some things that had been said. So we're grateful to them as well. Praise the Lord. So 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 18, he says, For as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit under unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is a flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Yes. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 50 and verses 17 through 20. Genesis 50, 17 through 20. Praise the Lord. Genesis 50, verse 17. So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for, I am, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring it to pass this day to save much people alive. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 and verse 28. Therefore, brethren, no, yeah, 8. Praise the Lord. 28. Gotcha. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Praise the Lord. So, <clears throat> you know, it's great to, to get to the other side of a difficult situation or a bad time and say, aha, now I see what, uh, what all this was about. I, now I get what God was trying to do. I see the results when you get to the other side of the situation, the circumstance, right? But it's entirely different to be in the mess to be in the confusion, amen, and, and say, God, I don't know how, but I trust this is going to be for my good. I trust that you have a plan. Amen. 
So the key to living in, redemptive, uh, in a redemptive way to trust Jesus, the Redeemer, is to trust Him to redeem you in the circumstance, in the situation, not after the fact. Praise the Lord. I mean, I, I know we're all looking for an end to this. But the truth is, Jesus wants to redeem us in the midst of it. That's whether it's a healing, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's all the other craziness that happens to be going on right now. So any, anybody can uh, get to the end of something and go, Phew, man, glad that's over. And God got me through it, right? We've all been there and we've all done that, but anybody can do that, right? Looking back at the situation, I can see God had something planned and a purpose through all of this craziness that I've been involved in, right? But it's entirely different, amen, to look forward into the invisible future, into what you don't know, into what you can't see, amen? And it's clouded by everything, amen? The attacks, the, uh, the assaults, uh, and still you see Jesus as your Redeemer in the midst of it. Praise the Lord. Trusting Jesus to bring us out of the trial while we're still in the trial. Praise God. And that requires not just waiting for redemption, but also living redemptively. Praise God. You can do this. And there's, there's three major ways of doing it. And that is take heart, hold hope, and have faith. Praise the Lord. It takes tough faith to be in the middle of an ongoing, no end in sight crisis, amen, and think, I'm glad you're doing something with this, Lord. I'm glad you're involved in this. I'm glad you're going to make something positive come out of this, Lord. So faith is exactly for these circumstances. We wouldn't need faith if we could always see the difficulty, if we always saw it coming, amen, or if we saw the end of the difficulty coming. We, we wouldn't need faith. We just need a little patience. Amen? What is faith anyway? It's not retrospect. Faith isn't looking back at something that happened and go, wow, that was cool. We got through that. Look at Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance, right? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's conviction. Praise the Lord. That's not, that's not pie in the sky. That's not knowing the end. That's just declaring the end. Praise the Lord. That's the conviction of things not seen. And it isn't about just trusting God to use our messes for His glory. Amen. It's about trusting that He's in control. And there's no escaping His loving kindness no matter what the situation we might find ourselves in. In other words, conviction is trusting God completely. Praise the Lord. See... We talk about how in the last days, the glory of God is going to fill the earth. What gives God glory? Faith. So if there isn't a reason for us to exercise faith, there isn't very, there's very little of God's glory being revealed. But I'm telling you this, with this thing, pandemic, whatever they want to call it, worldwide, the glory of God is going to cover the entire earth because there's a need for faith everywhere on this planet right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's exactly what Jesus, the Redeemer, made his business about. Amen. He came to announce everywhere he went, he made it his mission to redeem everything in sight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Revelation 21 verse 5. When Jesus came on the scene, every place he went, everything he did, every interaction he had was about redemption. Praise the Lord. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, right, for these words are true and faithful. Praise the Lord. So just in case people uh, that Jesus met didn't believe it, he freed demoniacs. Right? He released them from, from spiritual prisons. Praise the Lord. He restored lepers. Amen. Leprosy was a type of sin in the old covenant. Amen. And he opened blind eyes. In other words, gave, them, gave people spiritual vision, not just natural vision, but spiritual vision. Amen. And he made dead people come to life. Yes. Praise the Lord. John 9, verse 1 through 7. John 9, 1 through 7. Praise the Lord. This is, a weird, this is one of those weird things that we've all, and I've talked about this before, but Jesus spits in the mud and then sticks it in the guy's eye. I mean, that's, that's more than awkward. That's weird. You know, that's just not right. But he, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? 
Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. So why do you suppose that Jesus would take dirt and spit and put it in a guy's eyes? He could, have done, he could have just said, see. There was a purpose for this, as there always is in everything that Jesus ever did. But he takes this dirt, spits in it, and then puts it in the guy's eye. I mean, is there some kind of, I don't know about this, healing properties in saliva? Or dirt? Or the combination? The nurse is on board here, praise the Lord. I, if there is, I haven't heard about it. I knew you were going to raise your hand, Peter. Well, I can tell you what the Holy Spirit revealed to me about this. And I heard a, another minister, well-known minister confirm it. The guy had no eyes. Jesus took the, the guy was made from the dust of the ground. Jesus took the dust of the ground and created eyes in him. Praise the Lord. Possibility. But it was also a conscious echo of creation. Yes. Yes. In the story, the first appearance of redemption on earth, God made man out of dirt, and he blew his own breath into him to give him life. And here, Jesus is recreating the creation story. He's redeeming fallen creation, and he's using dirt in his mouth to give man a whole new life. Praise the Lord. Behold, he's making all things new. Praise the Lord. That's shoulders. That's backs. Amen. That's knees. That's legs. That's ankles. That's hearts. That's lungs. Yes. That's minds. Yes. Praise the Lord. He's making all things new. Yes. Amen. And He's doing it now. Yes. Praise God. We need to trust that God, the God who loves us, is redeeming our lives here and now in our situations and in our circumstances. We think of redemption as being a historic event for us, but that's not the case. Amen. Trust that God who loves you will sustain you and he will not forget you. Our spirits were redeemed at the moment we were born again. Our bodies are still in the process of redemption. Amen. That's where healing comes from. That's where health and wholeness and all that takes place. It's an ongoing thing. Salvation is a historic event for us because we are born again. But the, the redemption of God is ongoing. As long as we're on this planet, redemption will continue to be a part of our lives. Amen. Not for our souls, not for our spirits, I should say. Not to, so that we'll go to heaven. That's already a done deal. We're as good as there. In fact, he says we're seated with him in heavenly places. But there is an ongoing redemption that takes place in earth. And that's why he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What is that? That's healing. That's wholeness. That's all that, that God has done for us through his word. Amen. That's all part of our inheritance, amen, that comes through the Word of God, amen? And so he's, he's telling us, I'm going to sustain you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forget you, amen? And that is crafting this beauty out of darkness. Praise the Lord. It, with all the horror, with all the fear, with all of the ugliness, there is a beauty that can rise up out of this, and that's the redemptive properties of God in a situation. And it's always there if we'll look for it. Amen. If we will trust in it. Amen. He, he's, God is telling a story with your life and with my life. Each one of them is a different story, but it's all part of a story. It's all part of a major story. They're like roles in this great story, this epic story, amen, that puts you in a vital role in the story of the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. We may never think of ourselves that way. We think of ourselves as insignificant and just, I'm just one person, you know, and all this stuff. No. Every human being that is born again has the power of God resident within them. They have the ability to, to not only live redemptively, but to redeem all that's around them. Hallelujah. Are you not uh, an heir and a joint heir with Jesus? When Jesus did those things, when he cast out the demons, amen, when he healed the sick, when he opened the blind eyes, he did not do that as God. He did that as a man. Yes. 
Now, if you don't think that's true, why did the devil tempt him? And what did the devil tempt him with? We've just got a small portion of it. Now, Jesus was tempted in like manner as every one of us. He was tempted with illicit sex. He was tempted with drunkenness. He was tempted with drugs or whatever else there might have been. He was tempted to lie. He was tempted to fear. He was tempted to give in. He was a human, amen, and he was tempted in every way that we are. We sometimes forget that and we think, well, no, uh, you know, maybe some stuff, but not that. Yes, he was tempted in every way that we are tempted, but yet he did not yield to the temptation. Why? Because he always said what God said. He always re b believed in the redemption of God's ability in his life to bring him through the situation or the circumstance. That's the only difference between Jesus and us. Big difference because God has now declared us to be just like Jesus. Spiritually, we are as mature as we're ever going to get. It's the rest of us that has to catch up. Praise the Lord. That's the ongoing redemption that I'm talking about here this morning. I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I don't, heaven is my home. I have no concern about that future. But there is issues here on earth, and I need redemption here. I need ongoing redemption. I need to live redemptively so that I can be a redeemer as Jesus was. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at, let's look at this uh, in Romans 8, uh, verses 18 through 24. Romans 8, 18 through 24, Peter. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. You know it takes crisis to bring out yeah. yes. things sometimes? It takes, you know, bad situations to bring the best out of people. What we've seen and what I've seen over and over is whether it goes back to 9-11, whether it goes to, you know, any number of things that have happened in my lifetime, crisis brings out the best and the worst in people. You find out what you're really made of when the crap hits the fan, you know. And I'm not, this is not a judgment thing, I'm just saying it's just a reality. When, when, when things are tough, it's an old saying, but tough get going. You know, when things are tough, we have to use faith that we haven't had to use maybe in other situations. But I believe God's been building this, this generation to this place because he knew we were the generation. We would be the generation to usher in this glory of God in the last day. We, we ought to embrace this thing with both arms. We ought to just say, hey, the, I was it's like, uh, you know, we were made for a time such as this. We were birthed here for this particular time. As Tim said, why weren't we born in 1880? For the very reason that he said. Because we were created for this time, for this place, for this season, amen, to, to bring about the glory of God into people's lives. For people to see the redemptive qualities of God in this earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. That vanity is just, it's all about me. So because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation, whole creation, everybody, everything, groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And I'm telling you, that's half of what we're seeing on the streets of Des Moines and around the country. It's, it's this idea. Within everybody is this hunger for God, is this, this longing, amen, for, for a reason to be, yes. a purpose. Not just some random creature dropped on the planet, amen, left here to just work out your own stuff. No, we're groaning. Inside every human being is this longing for God. They just don't know that that's what it's for. That's why it leads them to drugs. That's why it leads them to alcoholism and multiple relationships and everything else. Because there's an emptiness, a longing in us, and they don't know how to fill it because they're trying to fill it with stuff or with people. Instead of understanding that the only satisfaction that you're going to get is by God. is through the relationship that we have with God. And not only they, but we ourselves, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our body. Why? Because we know we're saved, just like I've been talking about. But we also know this thing doesn't agree with what's in here. It doesn't always look like who we are. It doesn't always act like who we are. It doesn't always think like who we are. Amen? For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen 
is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? Praise the Lord. If we already know the end, what's the point in having faith? What's the point in believing? What's the point in trusting? Amen. Our hearts, our souls, our minds, and the strength of us. Amen. They long for their redemption. Amen. My mind wants to be redeemed like my spirit is. My body wants to be redeemed like my spirit is. My soul and my emotions and all that wants to be redeemed. That's what we're talking about here when we say, I'm, I believe God, but I still have some fear. That's not unusual because your spirit isn't fearful at all. The problem is we don't tap into our spirit. We usually let our brain run with us for a while and let circumstances dictate to us instead of recognizing he's already redeemed my spirit. He's trying to redeem my body. He's trying to redeem my mind and I have to cooperate with him there the same as I had to to get myself born again, to get my spirit born again. Amen. So believe that it's coming deep down in your bones because it's your bones that Jesus promises to redeem now. He's already redeemed the spirit. He's already made you one with him. But we still got this thing. And it's still living in a fallen world. Our spirits have already been redeemed. It's our bodies. It's our bones. It's our life today that needs to be redeemed. Amen? That's right. That's right. Now, you've got to believe that, not, you know, inspirational, but you've got to believe it factual. Not as a pie in the sky or a great hope that maybe someday. No, you've got to believe this is done as well as your spirit is. It just takes the same thing. Faith. Receive it in your heart and say it with your mouth. That's how you got saved. That's how you have to live the rest of your life. That's what redeemed your soul, your spirit, I should say. And it's the same thing that will redeem your physical body. Praise the Lord. It all works on the same level. It works the same way. Believe it. That what we're going through, amen, are former things passing away. I make all things new is what he told us. He's making something new out of this mess. Amen. And that's where our focus has to be on what he said, not on what we're seeing. Praise the Lord. Jesus, the Redeemer, is making everything new again. Praise God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. His righteousness, not my righteousness. He has made me righteous by His righteousness. He has declared me righteous because of His... In Christ, I am the righteousness of God. You should realize how powerful that is. I'm the righteousness of God. Perfect righteousness. Perfect God. And He declares me to be His righteousness. It's awesome. Matthew 13, uh, 24 through 29. Matthew 13, 24 through 29. And here's what we've been talking about. And I know it can get kind of seemingly convoluted, but it's, it's not as complicated as I may make it sound. I'm not trying to. It's just I'm not bright enough to make it sound simple like it should. But another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went away. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the weeds also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? Then where did these weeds come from? Amen. And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. And the servants said unto him, Would thou then that we go out and gather them up? Or in other words, you want us to go out and weed this field? And he said, No. Lest while you gather up the weeds, you root up also the wheat with them. Praise God. The wheat and the tares grow up side by side. Amen. Because even as the kingdom continues to grow and bring people in, the enemy continues to deceive others. So the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world coexist for a while. That's what we're experiencing. That's what we're seeing. The kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world coexisting. Amen? But not for long. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad I'm part of this generation. Amen. The radical reality is that Jesus, our Redeemer, ushered in the kingdom himself. 
praise the Lord, the kingdom was present in him as it is in us. It's no different than what God told Abraham. Every place you set your foot, it's yours. It belongs to you. Everywhere we place our foot, the kingdom of God exists. That's what he's telling us. Seek that first. Seek that oneness with God first. And the other stuff will be added to you. If you operate in that understanding of God's love and God's protection and God's provision, the other stuff take care of itself. He'll supply it. He'll supply your need. Because it's all by faith. Hallelujah. See, this dynamic reality proposes that we rethink our modern idea of last days. Amen? The end time kind of thinking, right? Which today we take for granted, but it's tradition. The truth is, it's only about 100 years old. I'm not talking about the book of Revelation, but I'm talking about our interpretation of it. We think it's a traditional truth, but it's only about 100 years old. It's only been going on for a few generations, this particular way of looking at it. Amen? I believe the proper, the correct, biblical, and contextual understanding of the end times is that there is an already sense and a not yet sense just like us. We've been redeemed, but you can't tell it. Right? Because it's spiritual. It's a spiritual thing. And to some degree, we, we, we are growing in that redemptive process. And, and so there are external things that change too. But the truth is, astrologically speaking, or in time speaking, it ought to encompass more than just a pop, apocalyptic, amen, end of the world kind of stuff. Estacology is really about salvation, the history of salvation. Amen? And it's about God's unfolding plan of redemption from promise to fulfillment, from Genesis to Revelation. And Jesus inaugurated, or his inauguration of the kingdom was the beginning of the end. That's why he says the Antichrist is already among us, the end times, we are in the end times. This is 2,000 years ago, right? A creation of the already and the not yet in which already gradually expands and the not yet gradually vanishes in to the already. Is that making sense? That's us. That's the story of us individually, but it's also the story of creation in general. Praise the Lord. We're done. It's done. We're, we're, we're finished. We're, we're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And yet, who would know? It's being brought into the already by the Word of God and by the people of God. By our declaring the truth of His promises. Redeeming the time, He said, while there is time. We don't need redemption once we get into eternity. It, you know, we already are in eternity, spiritually speaking. But physically, we're still in time. And that's why he says, redeem the time while there is time. While we're still here. There's an ongoing redemption, church, and that's what I'm talking about. Yes, we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But there is a redemption that needs to continue. And that's why we're still here. Otherwise, God would have just burnt the field down with everything in it. He said, no, leave, leave the weeds. <sighs> you look at these things and you think, punish them. You know, give them back some of what they're doing. You know, punish people, hurt them. Do something because we're, we can't do anything to this COVID thing. We want to get it and strangle it. We want to shoot it. We want to stab it. We want to bury it. We want to do anything. We see the, 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 the confusion and the chaos in the lives of people and we get angry and we get frustrated because we can't do anything about it. But God is telling us we're here because he knew this time was coming. And that redemption has to be ongoing. And we are the only Jesus in this world. The Redeemer is still here and he's still redeeming. 
but he's going to have to do it through us. He's going to continue to redeem us physically, but he's also going to allow us to reach out to redeem others who would otherwise be lost. Praise the Lord. The already and the not yet is just like salvation itself. We're saved, and yet from a natural perspective, we still sin. He says we're sinless, but we all know that from a natural, I'm not talking spiritually here, but I'm talking about naturally, we all know we sin every day. Okay, okay. All right, just me. I sin every day. Praise the Lord. But God's spirit in us is an ongoing purification, conforming us into the image of Jesus Christ. We're already there as far as God's concerned, but he's talking about how we can reach others, how we can be redemptive in other people's lives. We are reckoned righteous by our faith, though we still dabble in unrighteousness every day. Are you with me? We have been reckoned, we have been declared, we have been found righteous, and yet we dabble in unrighteousness every day of our life. It's a contradiction. It's a already and a not yet. Already, my spirit is perfect and righteous and holy. If I were to drop dead here, I'd be with the Lord immediately. Out of, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And yet, I promise you before this day is over, I'm going to do some unrighteous stuff. I'm not planning it. I don't have to plan it. It comes natural to me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's like, it's like I told Tammy. She called and was talking to Sally yesterday. And I said, you know, Sally cooks with... Uh, alcohol all the time. I said, sometimes she actually puts it in the food. <laughs> She's going to hate me for that. That's a joke. It's a joke. But I'm just, you know what I'm saying? It, that's us. That's humanity. That's people. Praise the Lord. We declare that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? Even though we know it doesn't look like we are. But we know something has already taken place. Amen? And that something was a redemption. And the reason we were redeemed wasn't just so we can go to heaven, but so that we could be redeemers. What does the Scripture say? The Scripture says that we are, uh, we are saved, amen, and we are reconciled to God so that what? We can be reconcilers. Just another way of saying we've been redeemed. Why were we redeemed? So that we could be redeemers. So we could bring the redemptive work of Christ to this world. Make it real here and now. Amen? The same duality, or duality, amen, applies to the kingdom. It's present, and yet it's future. It's in each and every one of us, and yet we know it's still out in the future somewhere, too. For now, the wheat and the weeds coexist, but not forever. Notice what Jesus said to leave the weeds. Don't try to pull them out. For now, just leave the weeds. Because in the reality of the kingdom and its redemptive quality, the dead come back to life. The goats become sheep. And weeds become wheat. If there's redemption. If there is a redemptive possibility. It's the story of everything God has ever done. Hebrews 12, verse 27 through 29. See, COVID-19 is a kingdom of this world. Hatred, chaos, it's a kingdom of this world. But it may bring many into the kingdom of God. This word, yet once more, signified the removing of those things that are shaken as the things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. This can be shaken. This can be shaken. This cannot be shaken. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Praise the Lord. As weak, as tired, as worn out as we get, 
as assaulted, as attacked, and targeted as we may feel. Remember, we've received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are the redeemed. We are a part of a kingdom that will demolish all pretenders. Oh, man, I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. Praise God. It will fulfill in a furious fashion. Our God is a consuming fire. Not to us, but to every kingdom besides His. That's why it's desperately important. Jesus loved us while we were yet sinners. He, he loved us when we hated Him, when we didn't want Him, when we didn't know Him, when we didn't care about Him. That's the world we live in, church. And if grace is sufficient for us, grace will be sufficient for them. If we have the courage, amen, and the fortitude and the, and the love for God to extend it where it's not even wanted. I'm telling you, Jesus would be right in the middle of all of this chaos right now. I'm not telling you to go down, you know, to the east side or down, down you know, into downtown or down to the, to the Court Avenue area. I'm just saying, all this chaos that everybody's upset about and angry about, that's where Jesus would be right in the middle of it. Now, would, he, would everybody accept him? Of course not. They, they crucified him. But his, uh, his purpose for being here, the purpose for Jesus to be here, and he knew it from day one, was to usher in the kingdom of God and to bring redemption. And if we're the body of Christ, we have no other agenda. There cannot be any other agenda for us. We've got to love people that are unlovable. I'm not saying you've got to like them, because we've all had love affairs with people that we didn't like. And actually, we've all, if you're married and you're in love with your wife, there's probably some times when you don't like her. And vice versa, I'm sure. Doesn't stop you from loving them. You just don't particularly like something right at that moment. So it's the same way with the world out here. I don't like the crap that's going on, but I've got to love those people because they're just exactly like me just 40 years after the fact. I just, I just gained some time on them, but they're, they're exactly the same as I am. And that goes for black, for white, for I don't care. There, I, you know, I went, years ago, I went through a, uh, I forget what it's called now, it's a family, you know, origins, family tree, genealogy. I forget the, the thing, but it was on uh, computer. And I looked up our genealogy. And, because uh, I was adopted and I never knew my natural father, just a few little things that had been talked about, and that was it. So I was trying to figure out, you know, okay, well, who am I? What am I? You know, what nationality am I? What, you know, background do I have? I found out I got something of everybody in me. I'm telling you, you I, it went, I was able to go all the way back into the 1300s, amen, and we were English, we were Dutch, we were French, we were North African. I mean, you name it, Italian. I had people and my ancestry from everywhere. Probably, probably black. North Africa, a good chance it could have very well been African American or, or, or today what we would call that. I'm just saying, the further you go into your genealogy, the closer it brings you back to Adam and Eve. So where you know, the more you look, the more you find out you don't know, you're everything. We're all something of everything. We've all got some of everybody in us because that was God. That was Adam and Eve. We all trace, we can all trace our roots all the way back to a same parental family. Adam and Eve. It shouldn't surprise us that we see the chaos and everything. After all, the, the, the first children born to them, one killed the other. Am I right? No. Nothing's changed as far as outside of God is concerned. People are doing the same thing they've always done from day one, regardless of their ethnicity. It's human to behave like idiots. It's divine to behave like God. Praise the Lord. The kingdom that we're a part of cannot be shaken. 
but it's going to shake loose every other kingdom of this world. That's a promise from God. We don't have to be afraid. We know who wins. We've read the end of the book, right? We've all heard that before, but it's a fact. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Amen? The promise of redemption, amen, is already sealed for us through the atoning work of Jesus Christ. Now it's up to us to decide how many goats are going to be sheep, how many weeds are going to be wheat, right? We make that decision. We determine. We're all waiting. We, we're thinking that there is a date somewhere out there that God has chosen. No, there is an appointed time, but that appointed time is up to us. Praise the Lord. There's been pandemics before. There's been Spanish flu. There's been, you know, the uh, bubonic plague. Uh, there's been stuff like this. This isn't the first one to be worldwide. So there were opportunities for people in the past, but they didn't make it. Why? Because the theology was messed up in a lot of ways. We're at a time now where God has opened our eyes and our hearts to so much more of him personally than people in the past ever had. He was always distant. He was always the judge. He was always angry. He was always going to get him. The, those things were all considered to be a judgment of God. When in fact they were nothing more than kingdoms of this world fighting against the kingdom of God. But the people didn't know their position. They didn't know their place. They didn't understand not only were they redeemed, they were here to be redeemers. And we're getting another opportunity. And I believe we're here specifically, specifically for this time. Because we are the redeemed. We need to say so. Amen? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Praise the Lord. We enforce this redemption by the truth of God's word. We say, whether it's our healing, whether it's health, whether it's somebody that's struggling or that's anti-Christ or whatever it might be, the redemption only comes one way, through our professing their salvation. Amen. Somebody did that for you. Somebody prayed for you. Somebody believed that your redemption would draw nigh. And it was coming from somebody who had been redeemed. Praise the Lord. I pray for our family. I pray for the church family every day. But I'm telling you, God's told me you're thinking too small. We need to be praying for our city. We need to be praying for our state. We need to be praying for our nation. We need to be praying for the world. Because, friend, heaven has no county lines. It has no state lines. It has no national borders. It's a place for the kingdom of God and the people of God. And that's going to come to this earth at some point. And the scripture even tells us that we will rule and reign with Christ. And I think God's just setting us up for that ruling and reigning given us an opportunity to operate the way he does in this earth because that's the way the world's going to operate from now on from the time of his return praise the lord romans 8:28 and we'll close with this romans 8:28 to 31 praise god romans 8:28 through 31 we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose. What is the purpose? Redemption. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, the Redeemer, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, that be us, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand and clap this morning. Thank the Lord. Praise God. God has so much confidence in the Holy Spirit and Christ in us that he's left it up to us to redeem the world. Can you believe that? That's what he's done. He's put it all in our hands. 
Now it's a question of what are we going to do with it? Hunker down somewhere and, and create a new religion or, or hate everybody that's not part of our group? Thank God Jesus didn't do that or none of us would be here today. No, he reached out to the hateful, to the unloving, to the cruel, to the vicious, and he loved them. And he offered them redemption. And God's asking us to do the very same thing. And in so doing, we become more and more like Jesus. We can try to be good. We can try to not do this and try to not do that. It's not going to change a thing. God has already declared us righteous. It's righteous acts that he's looking for. Not, not good behavior. Love for one another. Concern for others. Hope for others. Think, it's not hard. The moment you think, anybody here that's a father or a grandfather, it's not hard when you look at that other person and think, that could be my grandson. Stupid, stupid, but could be my grandson. He'd be acting just like I would if I was that age, probably. You know, we, we look at him and we think, what an idiot, lock him up. No, if that were, what if that was your kid? What would you, you'd do anything to keep them out of jail. You'd go take the last mile, you, you'd bail them out, you'd do whatever you could to help them. We're all in the same family. These, this, this is family, whether we like it or not, whether we want to admit it or not, this is the human family. Jesus came as a human to redeem humanity. He left us here as humans to redeem, to continue to do the redemptive, ability, the, the redemptive things of God. He has reconciled us so that we may be reconcilers. That just simply means reconnecting people to God. Amen. So we use the same redemptive theory, I, well, I won't call it a theory, the same redemptive truth as how we are born again and yet flawed physically. And so Jesus said, you are redeemed, but I am also redeeming you. So physically, we are being redeemed every day. Huh? Though we're dying, he renews us day by day. There's a redemption that is ongoing, and that's where the Word of God comes in. When I'm feeling pain, when I'm getting a bad doctor's report, when my finances aren't looking right, what am I going to do? I'm going to redeem the time while there's time. I'm going to declare what God's Word says. I have more than enough. Amen. My God supplies all of my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. By His stripes I was healed. Amen. I'm being redeemed continuously whenever I do that. Spiritually, I'm already done. I'm perfect. But we know there is an ongoing redemption for this body, for this natural. Amen? And we need to understand that about other people as well and reach out to them. I'm not saying go down there and get in the middle of something. I'm saying where the opportunities will arise, just like Tim said, I guarantee you there will be people that God puts in your path that you'll get the opportunity to be able to say, you know, God loves you. And they're going to say, God doesn't love me. He doesn't know me. Oh, yeah. He knows you better than you know you. And he has a perfect plan for your life. And it's for you to be redeemed and to enjoy the blessings of God here and now as well as into eternity. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate all your time. Thanks so much for sharing. And God bless all of you on the line, on the Internet. We love you. Hang in there. We're all going to make it. We're going to be victorious because we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.